So for the last couple of weeks, we have been talking about maintenance in your Jeep branded product. This week, we're gonna wrap up this series with the last five items that you should pay attention to as far as regularly scheduled maintenance goes. Now, last week we talked about fluids. This week, we're gonna talk about some very vital components that could prevent costly repairs in the future. So let's wrap this up and stick around. I think you're gonna enjoy this. Welcome back to Jeeping for Beginners, folks. Once again, my name is Josh. Today, we are wrapping up our series on basic maintenance for your Jeep branded products. We're going to talk about the last five items that you need to look at on a regular basis. And a couple of these are regularly overlooked and something we find on a daily basis in the shop should have been maintained eons ago. So let's dive straight in to the first one that we want to talk about. How many times have you gone in to get your oil change done and the guy behind the counter gives you a list of all these little things that they should be taking care of? For most people, it's annoying to get this list, but at the top of every one of these lists I have found is almost always our number one item, and that is your engine air filter. This filter is designed to clean the air that is going into the motor so that you have the right volume and the right uh, cleanliness of the air in order for the proper combustion inside. A dirty air filter can rob you of performance, rob you of fuel co economy, and can even make the sensors that are depending upon that clean air work twice as hard and fail twice as fast, such as your mass airflow sensor, your MAP sensor, or even your oxygen sensors. A good clean air filter on an average is only about 15 bucks and it should be replaced usually about every third or fourth oil change depending upon what side of this country you live on. If you're anything like me living out here in the desert with our dust and sand on a regular basis, sometimes every other oil change is the key. But keep this filter clean and you will keep the engine running at the optimum efficiency. So speaking of filters, now we're gonna talk about the second item, and that is the filter inside the Jeep. Now, not every Jeep branded product has a cabin air filter, but these days, almost all of them do. So if yours has a cabin air filter, it should be checked and replaced on a regular basis. Again, clean airflow makes a big difference in the efficiency of the components. The cabin air filter is cleaning the air that your air conditioner and your heater inside your vehicle is actually using. It is shocking to me how many of these filters we pull out of customers' cars that are literally loaded this high off the filter with dirt, acorns, um, bugs, leaves, all kinds of stuff that never made its way into your HVAC system, but is definitely blocking your airflow. We've even heard customers say, we're not getting enough air out of the vents. And nine times out of the 10, just replacing the cabin air filter frees up that airflow and gets the air flowing again. Keeping this system running efficiency is just as important as keeping your motor running efficiently. Your AC system is extremely expensive to repair. If it has to work twice as hard or three times as hard in order to maintain the temperature inside the cabin that you are trying to accomplish, then yeah, it's going to fail and it's probably going to fail prematurely. I've replaced them multiple times. I'm sure you have too. Thousands of dollars later, we finally get the AC working. A cabin air filter, folks, on an average is 20 bucks. So 20 bucks can prevent thousands of dollars in HVAC repairs in the future. Keep the air inside the cabin clean for you that you're breathing and keep the system running efficiently. So 20 bucks, folks, on a regular basis, usually once a year, check your cabin air filter and see if that one 
also needs to be replaced. Now for maintenance item number three, we're gonna once again go under the hood of the vehicle. And we're gonna look at your serpentine belt. Now a lot of people ignore this particular item until it fails or it starts making all kinds of screeching noises. By that point, it's too late. This needs to be replaced on a regular basis. Now Chrysler will actually tell you every 30,000 miles or so that the belt should be checked and or replaced. I'm telling you, depending upon the climate that you're in, sometimes it needs to be done a little sooner than that. Others, it could last a whole lot longer. But here's the important part. That belt turns your alternator, which controls all the electricity that's going to your motor and those wonderful electronics in your vehicle. It turns your AC compressor, which is what keeps your vehicle cool in the heat of the summer. It turns your water pump, which is what keeps the inside of that motor cool while you're driving down the road. It also turns your power steering pump, which is what makes it easy for you to turn the wheel without any effort. If this belt were to break or let go, you are immediately stuck on the side of the road waiting for a costly tow truck to get you back into town or back to a repair facility to replace it. If the belt does break, it could take one of these components with you. A water pump on an average could be as much as $1,000 to replace. An alternator could be six, $700. An AC compressor, good Lord. Nowadays, with the cost of refrigerant, those things are upwards of 1800 bucks to replace. A serpentine belt is like $50 at most auto parts stores. Check it. If it looks worn, thin, cracked, replace it. Remember, it's made of rubber. Rubber, over time, especially with the heat that's under the hood of your vehicle, is going to stretch. And if it stretches too far and it jumps off and gets caught in something, well, that 50 bucks now just turned into hundreds or thousands of dollars in repairs. So check the serpentine belt on a regular basis, usually every 30 to 40,000 miles, to see if that also needs to be replaced. The fourth item we're going to talk about is your tires. Yes, they need to be maintained and are a very expensive feature on most of our vehicles. As it is a petroleum based product, the cost of tires are going up. So I'm going to explain how you can get the most life out of your tires as you possibly can. Rule number one, rotate them on a regular basis. According to the National Highway Traffic and Safety Administration, tires should be rotated once every five to 6,000 miles. Back in the day when we were doing oil changes every 3,000 miles, they said every other oil change. Now, as we talked about in the last video, you can get your oil change done every five to 6,000 miles. So they should be rotated every time. Here's why. 99% of the roads in our country lean to the right. They do that on purpose for water runoff so that the water doesn't stay in the middle of the road. 66% of every turn that you take, according to the National Highway Traffic and Safety Administration, is a right-hand turn, which means that the right rear tire on your car is the one that gets pretty much all of the abuse. Your left front tire, because of steering, is the second one right behind it that gets all of the abuse. The most vehicles weigh between four to five, maybe even 6,000 pounds. Look at all that weight leaning to the right and always turning to the right. If you move the tires around the car on a regular basis, you keep them wearing even, you keep the vehicle running smooth, and you get the most life out of it. Now, for those of us that are driving Wranglers, Liberties, uh, some Grand Cherokees or uh, higher model Cherokees that have a matching full-size spare, I strongly recommend rotating all five tires. Put the spare into the mix in your tire rotation. Reason being is you figure if you are rotating five tires, but only using four at a time, mathematically, you're going to get 
more life or 20% longer out of your tires before they need to be replaced. <laughs> if you're anything like me and you run these big old 37s, these guys are like 2,500 bucks for a set. I don't want to pay that any more often than I have to. So rotate them regularly, keep the tires wearing even, keep them lasting as long as possible. Now, that was rule number one. Rule number two is tire air pressure. Now, this is something that we could talk about for at least 20, 30 minutes on the appropriate air pressure you should be running in your tires. The good news is, is for those of us who off-road the vehicle, I actually do have a couple of videos prior to this one talking about proper air pressure, both off-road and how to determine the proper air pressure on road for your oversized tires. But let's assume that we're running all factory components. On the driver's side door, there is a placard that tells you what the recommended air pressure is for that tire. I don't care what the tire says. Tire could say it could hold 44 pounds, 60 pounds, 80 pounds, doesn't matter. Run the air pressure that is listed on the driver's side door placard of your Jeep. Usually it's between 35 to 37 pounds. The reason being is Jeep spent a lot of money and a lot of time researching what air pressure is the premium perfect air pressure for the weight of your vehicle, the size of your tire, and to make sure that you have even contact on the ground at all times. If you run your tire pressure too low on the roads, it can affect your fuel economy, it can affect performance, and it could definitely wear out your tires a whole lot faster. If you run your tire pressure too high, it can affect your fuel economy, it will absolutely affect the way that the vehicle drives down the road, and you're going to wear them out way faster than they should. So rule number two, maintain the proper air pressure. If you want to know the air pressure that you should run with oversized tires, as we are changing the geometry of the weight to tire ratio, um, I'm going to put a link in the description down below on how to chalk your tires and determine what that air pressure is. Finally, let's talk about maintenance item number five. I did not save this for last because it is the least important. I saved this for last because just like the last video, it's something that I'm extremely passionate about. And that is your spark plugs or what some people refer to as a tune-up on the motor. Now, this is difficult to set a hard and fast rule for how often they should be replaced. It is actually dependent upon the motor that you're driving. Whether you have the four-cylinder, the Pentastar V6, the Hemi V8, or the SRT, be sure to check your owner's manual for how often they should be done. As a general rule of thumb, I have found that most of your Hemis are every 30,000 miles, your V6s are every 60,000 miles, so on and so forth. Chrysler has made that determination on how long that spark plug should last. Once you exceed that limit, assuming that there are no other problems, the spark plug's ability to ignite the fuel properly, maintain an efficient burn, and give you the proper fuel economy continues to diminish over time. Replace them on a regular basis. Do not wait until the check engine light comes on and tells you that you have a misfire or that your O2 sensors are breathing more fuel than they're breathing air because your spark plugs aren't working efficiently. The second thing we're going to talk about is the type of spark plug you should put in your motor. With Chrysler, for whatever reason, they have designed their entire engine platform around their spark plugs. So OE replacement is my only recommendation. Chrysler tends to use champion plugs. Champion Coppers in the Hemi, uh, Platinums in the 3.6, the Iridiums in the 4-cylinder, but they're Champion branded plugs. I would stay with Champion. The reason being is because changing the brand or changing the type, for example, upgrading from Copper 
in the hemis to iridiums is going to negatively impact your fuel economy, your engine efficiency, the temperature of the fuel burn, and ultimately how the longevity of that motor. If Chrysler says to use the Champion Copper spark plug, that is where you're going to get the best fuel economy, the most efficiency out of the motor, and the correct firing temperature. We have a tendency to want to upgrade. As you can see, most of us upgrade everything on our vehicles. This is one item that you do not want to upgrade. A different brand or a different type is actually going to hurt you, not help you. So for item number five, replace your spark plugs on a regular basis and use the OE replacement plug and you will keep that motor happy, keep it as fuel efficient as possible and keep it running for a good long time. All right, folks. Well, I hope that that answered some questions and filled in some blanks when it comes to the maintenance on your Jeep branded product. Don't forget to check out the other videos in this series so that you can get the complete package. In the meantime, if you have any other questions, don't hesitate to reach out. You can put them in the comments below or shoot me an email and I'll get back to you as quick as I can. Uh, before I let you go, I did also want to mention if you haven't done so already, do check us out at jeepingforbeginners.com. I'll put a link in the description down below this video. Uh, the 2023 class schedule is already booming and we have already had several successful off-roading for beginners classes with people who are so excited to know and learn the limitations of what their rig is and how to use it off-road. So for something that you're interested in, there are all kinds of different classes and different opportunities. Some of them pretty epic if you want to check it out. But speaking of epic, we had this one uh, person in our class last weekend who had brought this up, and I thought this was the most interesting factoid. I actually had to look it up for myself. Did you know that somewhere in the middle of this country, there is a church that is built entirely of grasshoppers? I mean, the stuff that you could find by getting out and exploring and seeing the world around you is just awesome. So it's on the list. We're going to go check that out. Oh, don't forget to check us out at jeepingforbeginners.com. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments down below or shoot me an email and I'll get back to you just as quick as I can. In the meantime, stay safe, happy jeeping, and we will see you next time. For those of you playing our little scavenger hunt, did you catch the clue that was in that video? If not, then you may want to watch it again. And for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, you should check out this video right here. This one's going to tell you everything that you need to know about joining the Jeeping for Beginners scavenger hunt. In the meantime, good luck. So excited as 2024 is going to be an epic year.